Hello all and welcome back to my channel. I hope you are all doing really well. Today I am just going to flip through one of the journals I have made and haven't used. I made this baby quite a while ago, I think two years ago. I was planning on using it as my personal journal, but I was just so into making books at that time that I made a few and I never got to using any of them at the time. And I ended up using a different one, which is the purple one that you guys already saw. Um, but I absolutely love this book. And I think that I'm going to be using this when the purple one is finished. Um, so the purple one is this one. Um, yeah, so when this one is full, I will move into this one. And yeah, I just really love this book. Every time I look at it, like I forget how wonderful this book is on the inside. And I just feel really wonderful every time I hold this book, open this book. So this will definitely be used next. And I know that I talked about making the TN inserts. I did the paper dyeing video for the TN inserts. Um, and I'm going to be doing that this weekend because... I didn't have the time to film that during the week this week. Um, there was just not enough time. And that video is going to be a little bit more involved, you know, explaining things. But I didn't want to go without posting a video, without making a video. So I thought that this will be a nice, fun, quick one. Okay, so let's get into it. So this is all hand-painted. I don't actually remember what I used to make the cover. I think... It's not completely hard, as you can see. Um, I think it was just like really, really thick and sturdy cardstock. Uh, it's not chipboard because, you know, it's it's too bendy for that. But yeah, so that's what I used. And I think I used the same thing for the spine. Um, yeah, so the spine isn't very thick. I think I used the same thing. But yeah, so it does have a little bit of give. But for the most part, it is kind of like... You know, it is, it's not a soft cover, but it's not a hard cover. So it's somewhere in between. And this was also the first hollow back binding that I did. Um, I took Nick the Booksmith's course on Teachable for this. It's just $12 and it's, it's really great. And it helps your books to lay really flat. So that is what I did here. And it has the little dangles on the spine, which I saw and learn from Johanna and so I took a cue from her this book is very heavily inspired by Johanna like how she puts things together so it just has a lot of random beads and wine cork this was a little candy bottle that one of my students gave me with little candies in it and so I just kept it it's plastic and put some beads in it this is a huge button that was just glorious, so I put it on the top so that, you know, you would see it like that. And, yeah, it just has, this is a little fake spool. Uh, it's made out of wood, it's, you know, just for crafting, like a little bead. And I put some thread around it and some other buttons. This was a necklace that I took apart and just put on. And yeah, so that is the little dangle. Oh, and this is actually not wax thread. This is, so this was just some cotton, like you could use it for knitting or embroidery. And it's also what I use to sew in my signatures. I just find, found it at the Daiso here because I couldn't find wax linen here for the life of me. But so I just colored it with, I think it was the same paint that I painted the flowers with, acrylic paint. And I mix it with water. So it did kind of coat it a little bit. And yeah, so that is just what I used to make those. Actually, I have some left here. Bought it on a big spool. So it's not real cotton or anything. It's just, it's a blend. But yeah, it's like this little thread, you know. And this actually works pretty well to sew in signatures and to make little dangles. So yeah, sorry, I'm not more helpful on that, but I just recently started running out of it. So I don't have the little 
wrapping that was around it that had all the name and stuff like that but okay so yeah this was just hand painted with acrylic paint uh black and then free hand painted some flowers they're not the best flowers but i wanted that look i wanted it to look just free and i just did whatever i want and what i felt like in the moment really and then i used a q-tip and some metallic copper paint and some book corners that I actually, they were too gold, so I used some of the acrylic paint to just make them a little bit more coppery. The back is the same, and it just has a little handmade wooden thing here, which I also got at the art store here. Um, I am hoping that I might be able to show you guys inside that art store, but I don't know if they would allow me to film in there. And then this is a stencil with the same copper acrylic paint, roses. I love this stencil. I use it a lot. And so, yeah, that is the cover. So let's just go inside. Uh, oh, yeah, and the eyelets, you know, it's just normal eyelet hole here for the closure. So this is very cheapy lace that I just put here. It's like really rough, really coarse. And at the time, it was the only, like, matching thing that matched the book that I could use for a closure. I might swap it out, but for now, you know, it's fine. I really like that it's black lace. So I might get some nicer black lace and replace it when I start using it, but for now, it's okay. All right, so here is also some of the black lace. Um, these were ones that were thinner and they kind of had some mistakes the ones that are like they looked weird like they weren't very good they were duds in my opinion which is why I use them through here but this was really nice and I actually made a mistake when I uh, because I didn't know that I was going to do a hidden binding I thought that I was just going to sew through it but then I decided to do a hidden binding and I had already put this um fabric sticker here so it's fabric it feels and looks like fabric it is fabric but it's a, a sticker a fabric sticker and they are wonderful uh, and they're really cheap they're like a dollar or less at the art box here which is an art stu um, store or the Daiso and I love them uh, actually ran out <laughs> I've used all of the ones that I have but yeah so I already stuck it down because I thought you know I'm just gonna sew through the binding but then I did next class and I really wanted to do that binding because I wanted to be able to see that beautiful spine with the roses so I was able to lift it up because it's a sticker I was able to lift it and get you know the hidden binding underneath but then the hidden binding was taller <laughs> than this end fabric so I ended up sticking the lace over so you couldn't see that you know just to hide it a little and it is a little pocket you know like a belly man which is nice and i actually really like how that looks okay and then this is a page from a daffy's diary this is pink fabric dye and stenciling piece of craft paper and oh that is my nephew i need to take that out i want to use that later okay so this is just a little paper bag i got somewhere and scrap piece of that actually didn't want this video to be that long but I inevitably make my videos too long because I like talking about this okay so this is just some dot grid from a notepad yellow paper and some fabric washi some dictionary this is an Afrikaans dictionary some grid paper fabric dye with a sprayer, just some plain copy paper, craft paper, and copy. And I love these lace washi tapes, or they're not washi, they're lace, but they are lace stickers. So I have quite a few different ones, like this one, and the purple one, and the pink one, and they are just glorious because it makes it so easy to 
put lace on the edges of your pages or wherever you want. Um, and you don't have to sew it. You don't have to worry about glue seeping through it. And it is quite, you know, sticky. Like, it, it sticks really well. And so I really love these. Use them a ton. There. And this is a printable from Johanna. This was part of one of her zines, like the monthly zines. And some fabric tape. Same with this page from Johanna, and I just made a little envelope out of it. Craft paper. I really love craft paper because it's like a nice thickness, and the color is just already perfect. More fabric dye, stenciling, Daphne's diary, craft paper, and this is a acetate pocket that I just added with some beautiful rose washi, coffee dyed note paper, I really like this color pink fabric dye, I think I'm going to make some more papers of that. And this is some lace I just stapled on the edges, like really nice neon pink. When I was choosing paper for this book, I specifically wanted, um, ah, tracing paper. I wanted all different kinds and colors and patterns. I didn't have a theme. I wanted it to be really random and different sizes and, you know, just anything and everything. And I love this book. I love how it turned out. And it is quite heavy, actually. <laughs> I think because it has, like, so many different kinds of papers. This is another printable from the zine from Johanna. And it's just printed on Kodak matte everyday photo paper. And it's just beautiful, so I put that in here. This is a scrappy piece of faux leather that I had, and I just sewed it like a belly band and some lace, lace tape. More Daphne's Diary. I love Daphne's Diary. Like I think most crafters do. Oh, this is great actually. This is like light yellow paper. And then I put the fabric dye sprayed over that. And that comes out really great too. This is some coffee dye. This is some sketchbook paper. So um, I do love to draw and sketch. And I just put this in here, you know, so I could use graphite pencils and whatever and you know nice weight to it fabric dye another one of Johanna's and here I was actually running out of ink in my printer so I just kept printing to make sure that it was empty before I put in a new cartridge and I just liked how this came out it was supposed to be all this yellowy orange color and it just <laughs> faded into pink but I like that so I put it in here and made a pocket out of it. Just white paper. Sketchbook, coffee dye. Craft paper. Ah, this is a little envelope, really pretty envelope. I still have some of these that I just sprayed with some fabric dye and then I glued it onto here so it's a little pocket and it flaps out like that. An acetate pocket that I hand sewed together and then just added it in with washi tape. Stenciling and actually some gilding wax around it. Oh, this is paper my mom found. Um, at home and she just gave it to me. It looks like this marbly kind of Pattern. I don't know if you can see. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can see that But so she found it at home and she gave it to me I was like two years ago when we visited home and then some notebook paper. It's really nice and thick I love these and they stain really well, too Some yellow paper, so this is actually gift wrap that comes in a4 sheets and it was some of the first pattern paper that I saw here. For some reason, scrapbooking paper and pattern paper is almost impossible to find. But I saw this pack and I was just like, that's so cute. I'm going to buy it. And then it ended up being shiny because it's gift wrap. 
but I still use it, you know, you can still stick stuff on it, and it's definitely still usable, and it's just really cute. So I put a few of those in here. And more dot grid. This craft paper is a little bit thinner, but it's still, I love the texture of it. There. So this book is fairly plain as far as pockets and ephemera and decoration goes. It's mostly just lots of different kinds of paper. Um, I, at the time, I mean, I'm still not, but even more so at the time, not very skilled at, you know, sewing on paper and I was just really starting to get into things and um, here's a envelope with washi and I was just so eager to make a book that I didn't want to spend too much time on like decorating the pages I just wanted to sew them in I just wanted a book so there aren't many pockets and things like that but you know I can always add those it's part of the fun as you use it this is cardstock that was yellow that I also used fabric dye on, which came out really cool. Tracing paper. I actually have some more tracing paper. I want to try to dye it with the fabric dye and coffee and see how that goes. Yeah. Little pieces. Ah, this is a paper bag that I... Instead of, because you know the sides fold in with paper bags, I just flattened it out and cut it open on both sides so that, you know, you can have a pocket. And I love that. I want to do that some more in other books that I make. Fabric dye. Dictionary. I also love using book pages and dictionaries specifically. This one is from Theodosia Square paper pad and it just opens like this and I just tipped it in with some washi tape. And here's a pocket with a piece of paper. Beautiful Daphne's diary. Love that. This and another belly band, some ephemera that printable ephemera from Johanna, also part of her zine. Big sheet of drawing paper. This paper pad I also bought like two years ago and it's Kaiser Craft, I believe. Bought it in South Africa. Tracing paper. And here, some little extras. This is an envelope little scrap piece and a pocket that I learned how to make on Gail, Gail's channel. So I put that there. And lastly, I sewed this envelope in as, instead of a last signature, and it's an expandable envelope that I learned how to make on Johanna's channel. And so it expands like this, and there's some stuff in there that photographs and things I haven't used yet and it just closes with the two little buttons like so with that same little string that I showed you and that's it and it has the lace in the back again and this is a book plate from Nick the Booksmith Thanks.
sleeveless. And that is it. She is wonderful and beautiful, and I really can't wait to use her. So yeah, so that is my video for today. I do have a few books that I have made that are still empty and unused, so I will probably be making videos like this um, quite often for the next week or two to show you all of the ones that I have. But yeah, I hope that you enjoyed this and that I will see you this weekend for making the TN inserts. Bye guys!